Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody to Everyday Heroes. My name is Sherry Elise and I am so excited to be here with you guys today. If you are joining us live, say hello in the chat. Hello, Samantha's already here saying hello to the Valley of Change. You guys, I have an amazing show for you today and I hate saying the word show because this is more than a show, this is real life. But before we dive into that, I wanna let you know that my name is Sherry Elise and I am the best-selling author of the book, Love Yourself Happy. I am also a global speaker and a self-love coach. I started Everyday Heroes because I wanted an opportunity to share with you people who are changing the world and not just your average or your obvious definition of a hero, which are always, you know, our people on the front line, which are amazing, but there are people who every day, regular people who don't have those titles, who are doing the work to change the world. And so that's how Everyday Heroes was born. And it is my honor to spotlight these people and the human spirit. Who? this is a big show today. Uh, for those of you who have been following my own personal journey, uh, with the unlearning, with the education, with uh, racism, systemic racism. This is not an easy conversation for a lot of us. And on May 25th of 2020 this year, my personal blindfold was ripped off. Uh, while I was aware, of course, about racism and all the things that existed in the world, and specifically in the United States of America, my idea, of what racism was and my obvious disconnect from it, meaning I knew I had a good heart and good hearted people can't be racist. But on that day, as myself and so many of us around the world, um, especially with the pandemic as the backdrop and all of us paying extra attention, I realized that there was more that I personally had to do uh, I didn't know what it was. And so for me, I asked God, I said, what can I do? And he said, do what you do best, which is video. And so I got together 50 other people of non-color, white people, let's just say it. And I, we put together a video and about not being silent any longer. Long story short, uh, my fiance knew that I wanted to go to protests. I was all that I wanted to do. But I was like, I don't want to go downtown. There's a lot of people. There's a pandemic. And one day he came home from work and he said, Sherry, you know that at the Sherman Oaks Galleria, there's a protest happening there. And he was like, and they're all socially distancing and they have masks. And I was like, what? And so the first day on my own in the middle of the day, I headed over there. And what I saw there and felt there was like any nothing else that I had seen. And I knew that I wanted to be a part of it. Hello, everybody. Hello, Raylan. Hey, Peter. Hey, guys. And so I want to show you just a short clip of what I saw that day and what has inspired me today to share with you the founders of the Valley of Change. So let me share with you what I was able to see. They matter here. Y'all, that was just a small, small part of, of what that feels like to be a part of this. So before I bring them on, which I know you guys are like, bring them on already because I want to talk to them. I'm just going to share with you quick bio about them. Well, first of all, the Valley of Change is a 100% donation-based nonprofit organization that was founded by Latora Green and Reggie Watkins. It began organically at the beginning of June 2020 in solidarity with justice for George Floyd. It was one of one of the local activists, Shyla Silva de Assis, was one of the first protesters to bring a homemade sign and stand on the corner here in Los Angeles of Ventura and Sepulveda. 
Local residents began to show up daily alongside Latora, Shai, and Reggie, and soon they had a small team of organizers. And since that first fateful week in June, they have been protesting every single day. They call themselves the little corner of big change because they are dedicated to creating global change that starts on the local level. Their ultimate goal is to have a worldwide impact. Their goals are lofty and they will say that it requires a lifetime of doing the work. They say they're working daily to end racism and police brutality, to dismantle the systems of oppression, to rebuild new systems of equality and justice for all, to invest in outreach and education, defund the police and empower everyone who visits their corner to use their voice and their votes to create lasting change. And they do this by living the mantra, do something every day. So let me tell you a little bit about these two amazing founders, Latora Green. She is the proud co-founder of the nonprofit organization, The Valley of Change, as I just shared with you about. Latora is a wife, she's a mother, and she is an activist raised in Orlando to create lasting change. And they do this by living the mantra, do something every day. So let me tell you a little bit about these two amazing founders, Latora Green. She is the proud co-founder of the nonprofit organization, The Valley of Change, as I just shared with you about. Latora is a wife, she's a mother, and she is an activist raised in Orlando, Florida. She relocated to LA with her family in June of 2006 and has been an active part of her local community ever since. And Reggie Watkins, he is a husband, a father, an actor, and an activist currently residing here in LA. Born and raised in San Jose, California, Reggie started on the football field as a youth and played till a knee injury derailed him in 21. Then he moved on to his second love, acting and comedy in San Diego, and then worked his way here to Los Angeles to pursue TV and film. Always the militant friends of his group, the recent killings of innocent black Americans at the hands of the police sparked Reggie into activism and he co-created a protest group, a community outreach organization called the Valley of Change. You guys, it is my pleasure and honor to bring on both Latora and Reggie. Hello guys. Hey y'all. What's up? What's up? <laughs> that was an amazing intro. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Sorry, I took up like all the time. I'm like, shut oh. up, Sherry. Just get them on. <laughs> that was great. I am genuinely so, so honored to have you guys here with us and the work that you're doing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, well, we're going to talk a lot about the Valley of Change. But before we do that, I like to share just a little bit about you guys. And so this is an opportunity for you guys to share about what led you here, what led you to activism. So I'm gonna start with you, Latora. Uh, curious for you, what, how this journey unfolded for you? Because truth be told, you know, racism, all of this has been happening for a long time. So what for you made this time different? than any other time? I, I, I sort of fell in activism. I was like going hard all around the world. There was a lot of police brutality going on. I fell in hard when Kanika Jenkins got murdered um, and I was doing things across the world, going live and like just really protesting with my live. But this time like to see George Floyd get murdered again, that sticks with you. I have a husband, I have, you know, so many loved ones around me that get stopped by the police. My son, I'm in fear every single day. Enough is enough. I'm tired of it. I'm going to continue to fight every single day. If we have to be out there for the next 10 years, we're going to do it. And if your heart's in it, you're going to be out there. You want change. You want to inspire people. You want to educate people. So I'm in it. That's it. You're in it. And you literally are in it. You are in it every, every day. single day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is one of the things that inspires me about the work that you're doing is that I just see you there. You know, I, I live close by and you're just there every day. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep saying and thank I'm you. I'm there because I think about my ancestors, too. They went through so much more. I don't mind holding up a sign, chanting in the hot sun so other people can get inspired and educated. I don't mind that at all. Amazing. If they went through worse, this is easy. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Reggie? What, um, what, what brought you to this activism? What made this time different than any other time for you? Um, 
I think it was just uh, Latora's spirit just grabbing me because I knew she was going to be out. I, you know, no, I I felt like <laughs> for uh, seriously, I've always been involved in activism, like um, just w even with my friends, you know, with my family, we always talk about these kind of issues. Um, I'd be the one to bring something up online in my social media groups. But this time when I saw George Floyd get murdered on T, basically on the, on, in this video, mm -hmm. eight minutes and 46 seconds. And it just struck me that we've got to stand up and do something. I got to stand up and say something. And I was in San Diego when the protest all started happening and I was watching on the news and I wanted to get involved, but you know, we've got a pandemic going on COVID and my parents are worried about getting, you know, catching it. So I didn't want to be around a big mass of people because I, I was seeing like all these people around each mm -hmm. other. And then I have a son, a 16 year old son, and I wanted him to get involved as well. But I seen the police acting like fools and shooting people and just being violent. So I didn't want to bring my son to that. And then I, we came back home to LA and I found out that there were people on the corner at Sherman Oaks uh, Galleria. And so we just made some signs and decided to walk down there. And as we're walking down with our signs, my son starts asking all kinds of questions about racism. How do we change the world? Like, why do people do this? And what if we don't, what if we can't make them be different? And it just, he'd never talked like this before. So it inspired me to stay active and be active. And then I got there and I saw Latour and I, ta I saw Shyla and I just wanted to get more involved. And there was people, there was, there was a few other people there, but everybody was kind of spread out and not talking to each other. And they were in their own little thing because everybody was worried about COVID. Mm -hmm. So me, I'm just a gregarious person. I went up and started talking to everybody there. I wanted to say hello, wanted to hear their story. And as I did that, I started becoming the person that people were asking questions. And then the next day, Latoria gave me a bullhorn. And then it just... <laughs> It just kept going. And so it just inspired me. My son inspired me. And then seeing white people out there inspired me to keep white people out there because yes. we need you. So it's just been a, a concert of things that have gotten this rolling. And um, I'm just glad to be there and I'll, and I'll continue to be there and we'll continue to fight. Oh, you know, you say you're, you're you, with the bullhorn, you know, it's you specifically. And, I, and I've told you this in person that as a white person, I know what I'm white. Uh, as 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 a white person, there's a whole crap load of feelings that come along with you know our non participation in this, as well as our participation by not doing anything, which is you know action in and of itself. Uh, so there's there's not there's no time for us white people to have the guilt and the shame and all of that. It's time for us to step up and. I remember something specifically that you said one day while you were on the bullhorn and it is something that I've carried with me and that I've shared with people. And, and that was about breaking down walls that there are going to be people who are angry at us for now, for showing up, who do not trust us, mm -hmm. who are, you know, and I remember you saying specifically to stay consistent and to keep doing it and to keep showing up because eventually those walls will break down. Yeah. And, I just, it was so powerful because I think it's easy for all of us to just stop and it gets too hard. It's too overwhelming. It's too much. Things are never going to change. And that day I remember in order for change, we've got to be consistent. And so I just wanted to say it was so powerful for everybody that's listening that you might feel that, you know, this isn't our place or what voice do we have? And and the fact that you said, just keep at it has been a big deal. So thank you for that, that day You're on welcome. the horn. <laughs> You're welcome. It's, I mean, it's important. Like, I mean, I, I, I um, compare it to being like a, a parent who hasn't really been around, right? Mm -hmm. If you've never been around, if you've been an absentee parent and then you all of a sudden show up, why should that kid trust you? Why would that kid just automatically call you mom or dad or love you? You've got to keep showing up. And you're not just going to, if you really want to be involved, you don't show up that first day with your toys and the presents. And then the kid is like, ooh. And if they're like, oh, I don't know who this is, you don't just bounce and say, okay, I, I tried. I tried one day. No, you got to show up every day. Every and day. You show up with no presents and you just show up and you sit there and you let them be mad at you. Mm -hmm. But you have to do it if you want to break down the walls and you want to have a relationship. So that's what white people have to do. 
You can't be fragile and just run out on this fight. You've got to stay in this fight and be involved with it. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be over in one Instagram post or one Facebook <laughs> post or one month. It's not going to be over. We have to do it every single day and be involved in fighting it. Take breaks, not breaks against racism, but take breaks to take care of yourself, but always come back and make sure that you're stepping up. If somebody says something, you hear something, question that. Somebody says something racist or makes a joke that you think is off color that just shouldn't be around. Question that. Call people out. We have to be willing to be uncomfortable and make people uncomfortable because that's how the change comes. Absolutely. Samantha says, do every day. It's a movement, not a moment. Which we I love Samantha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Samantha from across the street. The street. Yeah. Working across up top. Across the street, she sees us all the time. She's loyal. Yeah. She's faithful. She's consistent. Um, we love her. Thank you so much, Samantha. And actually, it takes everybody to make change. Right now is the time to make change. We need every single body. Yes, all lives matter, but we need everybody fighting with us to let the world know that all Black lives matter. We need to get this change together. We need to yeah. inspire and educate. We need everybody on this right now. Yeah. And can, I jump, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't, go ahead. But what she just said, I'll just sit back and let you go. Yeah. <laughs> I want to piggyback off what she just said about Black Lives Matter. Black lives in this country have been the most de demonized, um, non cared for in this country since its inception. Now, yes, Native Americans were basically almost wiped out. Black people were brought here in chains, enslaved, and then kept down. Like I'm not trying to take anything away from any other, you know, group or despair or, or marginalized community. Um, Native Americans were given, you know, reservations, which is a small thing to be given when they took your land away. But black people came here in chains, were set free, and then put back in chains under the guise of indentured servitude and policing and jailed and prison cop, you know, like, and still have gotten no reparations. So it's it's been a constant take one step we get knocked three steps back take one step you get knocked two steps back it's always something that pushes black people down so in this country the fight has to be to get black lives to matter to people then everything else we're fighting for can go forward if we can all mobilize on an issue to make the least of us matter then we can all get together and grow and fight for everything we need it's just that simple. But yep. you're you're going to always run into hate when you hear the all lives matter or you hear what about Chicago or you hear, you know, uh, black on black crime. It's always just a deflection away from people who don't want to have real conversations about what's right. happening. Because when I hear about what about Chicago, all I hear is that's another American city full of American citizens who are having a gun issue that you should care about. So why are you asking a black person about Chicago? It's not black. It's not just black people. It's an American thing. So if you care about America, get your ass involved in that too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I hear you, and and it's something that I run into because you know I, I'm speaking up now and being more vocal. And everybody, what I'm finding, and I wanted to clear this up with you because I think it's super important. You know, this the Black Lives Matter. Let's just talk about that. There is the Black Lives Matter movement. There is the Black Lives Matter organization, and often. All I hear is about the organization and people trying to group everything together and giving them this platform, as you say, because I believe it too, as a deflection to give reason why black lives don't matter because they want to point out something that may have a bad reputation. I know um, that you guys are not officially part of the organization. I just want you to clear it up basically for people about this, who you are and, and what you see. Latoria, you want to take that or you want me to? You can go ahead. I'm actually on their website. Oh, okay. We are different from them. <laughs> um, Black Lives Matter, uh, the official um, organization, is an amazing organization started by some amazing people to spark change. They they had their seven year anniversary uh, just I believe last week. Mm -hmm. um, we love them. We appreciate them. We are not officially affiliated with them. We believe. Black Lives Matter, which we want anybody who believes that to jump up and scream it. Those are three words in the 
English language that are welcome to be used by anybody. So our organization believes that Black Lives Matter. That's it. That's it. There, there doesn't have to be any, we're, we don't have to be, because what happens is people want to take one negative thing that happens with official Black Lives Matter and paint everybody with that picture. And even Black Lives Matter, you can't hold them to one person who did something wrong, but that's what they'll do. People want to find a way to discredit anything. So if one person who says Black Lives Matter does something incendiary, then all of a sudden it's Black Lives Matter is a, a group of terrorists. What? They've been fighting for change and fighting to enact policies that help Black people and help just the entire communities of the world. And the, people demonize it. So we're not officially affiliated with the Black Lives Matter um, organization. We believe Black Lives Matter. Period. All Period. Black Lives. Period. All, yes. black lives. All Black Lives. Yes. yes. I, I, I honestly, the reason why I bring it up is because I know it's a constant deflection from people and they bring it up all the time. Well, what about, and they're showing me news articles and, the, and, and you know, the violence that happens and it's claimed for the Black Lives Matter. And every time I hear it, it's just what you said, that they're just looking for a reason to not support and to not step up exactly. and to continue to blame. So I just wanted them, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I think what's important to really bring to attention right now is this idea of racism and the definition of racism. And the reason why I bring this up is because I know for myself, and I've talked about this openly and I mentioned it at the beginning, that feeling like I have a good heart and all of this, I could never put myself as a racist. And so when you take yourself out of the equation, what ends up happening is that you don't do anything because you say, I am not part of the problem. Yeah. And what I ended up realizing is that racism shows up in the support of systems that continually oppress and keep people down. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just wanted to get your thoughts around that because I feel like if we expanded the definition of racism or what people here in this day and age know it as, which they often think about it as on an individual basis, like someone with an evil heart, someone that's wearing, you know, a, a white supremacist. Uh Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. And so people then stay out of the conversation. Um, just curious around your thoughts about any of that. Either of you. Racism comes in lots of different forms. You staying quiet when there's an issue and you're not fighting for what's right. And you're hee hee ha ha, you're sitting back. That's racism. You know it's wrong. You see your family and your friends acting out and they're they're joking about black people and making jokes, you know, and how a certain group is ghetto and ratchet and so forth. You're not stopping it. You're a part of the problem. That's racism. You know, it comes in many different oh. You have these hateful people out here where they're saying, go back home. Where is home for me? Where is home? That's right. I think it's interesting. The reason why I bring this point up is because I think until everybody comes to terms and comes to some agreed something on racism, that's the only way we're all going to step in and do something about it. But as long as we keep ourselves separated from it, I feel like then people feel that it's OK to not be a part of this conversation and to be a part of this change. Yeah. And that's why I bring that up, because I, I think that uh, when we can get people to identify the ways in which they are helping to support something, whether they feel, cause we don't I mean, the minute you call someone racist, they're shutting down, they're not listening and they don't wanna be any part of the conversation. So we wanna call people into the conversation, not call them out, right? So yeah. I totally get that, but I just think that it's, it's really important to bring that up. Why do you guys think that people are listening now more than ever? Or first, do you, and then if you do, why do you think that is? Because uh, people ain't got no jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, why did you have to say right now, it? People ain't got no jobs. So they got nothing else to do but sit and and, and pay attention, right? There's nothing to do. They, they got nowhere to go. You sit at home, you watching news all day and reading. I mean, you're on your phone all day. People are already on their phones all day. But now you're getting you're on your phone and you're getting a bunch of information that matters right now. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know about y'all. My Instagram feed and my Twitter feed has gone from, well, Twitter has always been for me like a place where I get information and news. Uh, but Instagram used to be just full of 
me, 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 thirst trap brunch, uh, <laughs> travel, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> memes, funny videos. And I like all that. But now, not, not the thirst trap so much because my wife is, uh, my wife's watching this. So I'm not, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, Reggie uh, said. <laughs> but I love this information that's coming. So I think that's what's happening right now. People are getting just information. And I'm seeing like, you know, the, the dopest thing is, the people that I've met and I've become friends with and followed from, you know, creating the Valley of Change, I'm getting in touch with so many people that all they do is share information. Like, I love these people. And a lot of them are young people, like young people. It gives me so much like hope. These are young people who are just spewing nothing but information and good knowledge all the time, trying to like be better. And you're like, yo, this world is going, I wish I was 20 years younger because I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be joining them and really, I mean, I'm watching the, and a lot, of, and, and, and really dope is that these are white kids too, who are just on here pushing out how to be better and like challenging people and correcting people. And this is the spirit that we, we need. Like it, it's, I, I really believe it's no jobs and overload of information that people are actually listening and getting involved and really paying attention to this thing. And I mean, it sucks that it took a pandemic and uh, a man being murdered and, and have a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. But sometimes people have to be shocked into movement. And um, that's what it took. And, and it's not going to, like I said earlier, it's not going to end with a face a Facebook post or Instagram post or a month or a year, because sadly there will be more George Floyd's. Mm -hmm. There will be more Breonna Taylor's. There'll be more Elijah McClain's. But the goal is to lessen that every year. And we only do that by fighting and staying involved. I agree that we were talking about it yesterday, the pandemic. Yeah. People have plenty of time now. You know, I stopped work in May 29th. My and our computer stopped oh. working, right? <laughs> it's frozen. Well, you know, the pandemic did it. Um, <laughs> and I started, work, uh, you know, going out there every single day, starting June 1st, like really making some noise. Um, so we actually do have plenty of time. And now with social media, we can do it more now than ever, you know? Yeah. Young people, like Reggie said, they're tired of it too. You know, you have a lot of Black people, oh, I'm not going to go out there and protest. We've been trying for years. We've been trying for years. And I understand that, though. They've given that. up, and they're mm -hmm. scared. They're really scared. It's hard protesting. You know, we have a mask, but they still We've been trying for so long, and it's like hope. You have a lot of people. We get a lot of those honks. People go by, keep fighting, keep fighting for us, keep fighting for us, and we're fighting. But it's hard for them to get out there because they've been wronged so many times. But they believe through us since we're out there protesting. We have to keep going. Yeah. Well, and that's what, again, I'll just keep saying inspiring, but it's, you know, the consistency that you guys continue to show up with um, that reminds us that this isn't not only not going anywhere, but you guys aren't going anywhere. And the when you guys talk about white people there, I got to like tell our audience that the majority of the people there are people of non-color. I mean, white people there, which has been so like, I remember the first time going and just looking around and going, yes, yes, because we built it. We built this, and by built, I mean these systems that are racist, that are oppressive, and the only way that it's going to be destroyed is by us white people dismantling it because unfortunately we are and i say unfortunately because we haven't done well with our power but we are the ones in power and so you guys have been standing up for years um talking about it and now it's going to take all of us to do it so i love seeing that at the valley yeah. change i love seeing who you're attracting there and just back to the pandemic it did take that but it's here and it, and it drew me in because i was glued to the news watching about the numbers and who's dying and then it was about Ahmaud Aubrey and it was about George Floyd and it was just constant in my face. And it was not another name that you could ignore. I mean, four years earlier with Alton Sterling, like I always spoke out, I would say something because I would be devastated by it, but then it would die off. Then I would become quiet again. Yep. 
because I didn't know what I could do. And again, I knew that my heart wasn't. So now it's like, this is a daily thing. And uh, you guys are doing it with the Valley of Change. So let's talk about your little corner of big change. Yeah. Um, first, congrats on the nonprofit. I know. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. It's huge. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more detail about like literally, I know I said it in the bio, but like how you guys actually formed it. I, I One of you was out with a homemade sign. Share with us about that, Latora. Okay. So like I said, I went out there the first day, May 31st, didn't do much, just looked around and I'm like, all right, they're fighting. They're fighting for us. June 1st, I started going out, lost my voice. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then here comes Reggie his energy was so good and I was like yes we can do this and so he gets on the the megaphone and I'm like I, I really like him I, I think we can gel together <laughs> really powerful so a few days later I'm like Reggie I've always wanted to do a nonprofit. what do you think? so a few days later he comes and I'm like all right we're gonna do this so Courtney, which is Reggie's friend, she forms the name. She gets our um, Instagram page going, our email address, all that good stuff. So we're really rocking and rolling. So we just continue to go out there every single day. We start talking and we're, we're, we literally did it. You know, Reggie's great with speaking. I'm good with paperwork, but I'm also a good mouthpiece too. And I love like engaging with people. So it just works. We do things together and we gel off of each other. And it's amazing with me because Reggie, he literally goes out there to meet every single one. And I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Like, I can't remember everyone's name, but the ones that are consistent, like, I'm like, all right, cool. What's yeah. up? And then I'll get to know him. But he literally remembers every person's name. Sorry, guys, I'll do better with that. Um, and then to, the magic just happened. You know, he wanted to fight for, uh, you know, to end police brutality. I love feeding the homeless. We want to get out in the community. We want to start locally, but eventually expand throughout California and then go worldwide. You know, so we do have these big dreams and aspirations, and we literally want to inspire and change the world and change people's hearts. And here we are doing it. Yeah, I, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, literally, like she said, we came up there and the first, my friend Courtney, I said, she was like, you should come up with a name for this thing. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Like, I don't know what we should call it. And she was like, how about like the Valley of Change? That was the first thing she said. And I was like, wow, that's perfect. <laughs> it's done. That's perfect. She did good. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so she went home that night and made an Instagram page and got a Gmail. And then, um, you know, and the, we we got to make sure we talk about it because I got there. Then Melissa was there. Melissa was there, and she was showing up. Um, and just she's a she works in like the health the health field. She was showing up and just being involved all the time. And you could just see her heart was about it. And then uh, Kyla and Britt Kyla runs our social media, and she showed up. She came the first time I saw her. She came from another protest. She came from a protest, came to ours to protest some more. And then she started doing it all week and she brought her husband, Brick. And then they just started adding what they do. And she was like, I used to run social media. So she started handling social media and just mm -hmm. skyrocketed. And Brick yeah, is a awesome. producer and they do the videos and they come and set up and they break down and Jonathan shows up. And then Marquise, like our boy who's down the street, he was coming and he would talk to me and, and I was like, like, yo, you want to be involved? He's like, yeah, I'll help any way I can. So people just started showing up all the time and being involved and just, it, it just grew to that. And it sparked with Latora saying, hey, I want to do a nonprofit. Are you down? Let's do it. And I was like, I don't know how to do it, but I'll do it. So, you know what I mean? It just, it just went and we got friends. My buddy, Aaron, who's my tax guy is, he you know, he's one helping us with the, uh, helped us with getting the nonprofit and everything. And, it's, and he's a white guy. And he just wanted to be involved. He came he came to our march when we had our march uh, a couple of weeks ago. He came and that was the first thing he ever did, like protest. He was like, hey, I want to come down and see how this is going. and want to be a part of it. Came down and jumped in. And he's like, yo, I want to help, help any way I can. And so that here we are. Great. Well, and that's how yeah. you know that you're doing the right thing and at the right time because things just show up. Everybody shows up. Like yeah. doors yeah. like swing open. And you literally just had a community like that just came and just like lifted this up. and. Yeah. I got to tell you, as someone who attends 
just from the minute that you get there, like the welcoming that from you guys. And just the reason why I want to share this is because people only see what they see in the media. And yes. as somebody who attends my fiance, John and I, it is love John. Yeah. Love John. What up John? We see you there. We see you over there. <laughs> he just drives around sometimes and just honks when he can. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I want people to know what really happens at these protests, you know, and, and not just what the media sees. And just the fact that you guys are feeding everybody there today, there every day. Like Latora comes up to you and was like, make sure you eat, here's some ice cream, here's some food, here's some this, and like the, the sanitizers and the signs, and it is just and the music on some days, like, well, on all days. All days now. <laughs> all days, yeah. I was actually thinking the drummers when I said that, but music, like, it's so important to know what you're creating there is in terms of like community and feel because that's what's going to have people continue besides of course the mission itself but to keep coming out for it yeah. and it it is so important that people know what really happens and so when everyone people whenever i see people on social media like talking about protest i'm like i go to them there i can tell you you know me like don't watch yeah. it on tv this is what really happens and you guys have just created something um we just created something that I love to be a part of and that I will continue to support. And uh, I just, I'd love to know what your goals are, your big, your big audacious goals with the Valley of Change are. Tor? We, we literally want to educate in police brutality, stop the racism. And I know it's gonna be hard to stop the racism you can't change everybody you can't but you can educate them you know we want to help people get jobs we want to do partnerships with the community um it, it's just a lot that we want to do but first and foremost we need to help all black people right now the long-term goal is to help save black lives you know educate people and let them know that we matter let's put it into it right now but we also want to do partnership and help in the community and helping with the community that means the homeless as well they need a lot of help um we do have a lot of homeless people coming by every day we do get bottled water you know snacks whatever we can do it's hard but i mean we have to do what we can but long term we literally want to change the world mm -hmm. i know it's cliche but we want to change the world um you want to add reggie yeah, my goal is, um, I mean, I just micro goals. Like for me, mm -hmm. it's just figure I, I try to have one thing that I'm trying to do. And right now, what I'm trying to do is I want the Valley of Change to be basically a, a voting block, you know? Like um, I'm trying to build what I want to, it first started as just, you know, protesting and standing out there, but then I started to see what it could be and more of what it could be. And if we can get, 20 30 thousand people in the valley together we can change whatever we want in this city you know what i mean mm -hmm. it it we have to get together and then and vote and so what i'm trying to do is build a community of people who are like-minded who are about the same things to stand together and make changes and keep people involved so what we're trying to do now is keep giving people information give information let them know about local politics um look we're Tonight, uh, we're hosting a virtual meet and greet with Nithya Raman, um, city council candidate for District 4, which is Sherman Oaks. Um, we want to get people involved and let them know who's running their city, what they plan for, um, going to budget me. I, I've been saying this. I don't want people to say, I don't want to hear that you're woke again <laughs> until you've listened to a city budget meeting for four hours, okay? That's what you oh. have to do. You yeah. have to get in there and... And we've been doing that. We haven't been doing that forever. This is the first year I've ever listened to one of those meetings. Like, and this is the, and I guarantee this is the first time they've had this much engagement from the public. And you know what that does? It scares them into action because now they know people are paying attention. They don't just get to show up to work and do whatever the hell they want. They've got people watching. And what I want the Valley of Change to do is to be watchers. OK, mm -hmm. let's watch the local government and we take it from local and we keep on going and we help our community. Police brutality, we defund the police. That's something I'm big on. Um, and defunding the police does not mean 
all of a sudden tomorrow your police are going to be gone. People. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Take some of the money away. Yes. We're back we're talking a little bit about defunding the police for those who may not, and, and honestly, who just may not understand that. It's a terrible slogan, I think, personally, by the way. <laughs> it's it's reallocating. I mean, it's just basically changing the words. Defund, if people want, I mean, it's, I don't, I don't understand. How hard is that to, for people to understand? Defund, that means take away some funds. We overfund our police and we underfund affordable housing. Um, clean food, uh, shelters for for homeless, uh, transportation, we mental health. We underfund all those things. School yeah. districts. We underfund all that. We overfund police. Who? Why do we do that? Why does? Why would any business overfund something that is breaking down the rest of their business? Why would no business would do that? You would take money away from that and put it somewhere else and see how the business runs but we haven't done that. And the definition of insanity is doing something over and over and expecting a different result. We keep on giving more money to the police, but we keep on having problems in our communities. So why not try something else? That's what defund the police means. Try something else. And it doesn't mean the police are gonna disappear tomorrow. Right. That, that there will be less interaction. And, and, and truth be told, the most people I ever hear complaining about defunding the police are people that never need the damn police. Never. <laughs> like, never. what are you talking about? I, I, I've got an argument with somebody over in Beverly Hills the other day, like, defund the police. I mean, we need the police. Why do you need the damn police? When have you last needed the police? Well, I've, but people, no. So then you're talking about people that you don't even know, that you're not involved with, that you don't know the stories that they deal with the police, but you just want to blanketly say, we need the police. Learn about it. Find out why people are saying, get rid of it. But that it's going to take a conversation. It's going to take an uncomfortable conversation and you seeking out knowledge. And most people don't want to learn anything. They want to stay ignorant because it's bliss. Oh, you're right. It's so important because ignorance means that you don't have to do anything. Exactly. The minute that you know something, something's going to happen inside and it's like, I better do something about it or else you knowingly know that you are turning your back on something. Yeah. So, and Sherry, I know we spoke of this yesterday, but why is it that oh thank you kyla um why is it that the police aren't out there engaging with the community engaging with the residents mm -hmm. why is it that they only come when it's a crime why aren't we doing more events with them that is so important and i was so glad that we talked about that yesterday and you brought it up right now because i feel that if the police were involved in the community they wouldn't be trying to you know criminalize everybody they'd actually be trying to get to know them and my friend ray lynn who's here uh watching with us her and i run a uh white fragility book discussion group and we uh, and on learning racism and she talks all the time about relationships mm -hmm. and if we actually just created relationships with one another we would see how much more of course alike that we are but there wouldn't be you know this misunderstanding between people as much and so i think the police you know getting to know the community is such like a game changer mm -hmm. well i i'm um i'm a person i'm i've been listening I've, I've been talking to some people who are big defund the police as a way to eventually abolish police so to me i i do feel the steps to take are lessen police presence Mm -hmm. And definitely, you know, as a part of reform, do more community outreach. But at the same time, if you're going to be police, because we're going to have police for a foreseeable future, but let's work our way towards not needing them. If we have better mental health and we have better community systems, we don't need police. But if we can get to a place where we just change the training, this is my my idea for, for policing, is <laughs> let's raise the bar. I, I just always, this is stuff I talk about when I talk to people about it. Let's raise the entry bar. Okay, right now you, you got guys making fifty, sixty thousand dollars. That's not going to pull in the the best thinkers of our society into that job field, right? If we raise that, let's raise that to a hundred grand, a hundred twenty grand, right? Like I feel for you to be a person who has a job that walks around with a death device on your on your waist that could end the life, you should be Gandhi. Okay, you should have to be Gandhi to have this job. Right. You're right? right. You should not be regular Joe from down the street who's on Facebook talking about those niggers over there. Okay. 
you should not be able to have this job. We need to do more research before we hire these people. But the problem is they're giving them little money. So you're not going to get the best product. You're not going to get the best quality. Raise the bar of the entry. Okay. You need to have a pristine background. You should have a pristine mental health record. You have to have that. And then when you're going to go police a community that you don't know or you don't live in, you should have to go there, walk the beat without a gun to learn for a while. Okay. Learn how these people interact. Learn the, the you, you know what I mean? You know what would be so different if when you come in there and you're a white person who doesn't really hang out with black people or doesn't know Lat, uh, Latino people or Lat, Latinx people mm -hmm. um, or, or indigenous or anything or any other race besides your own and you come into a community and you're trying to tell them how to live, you don't know their tendencies. So you don't know that that black dudes might talk like this with our hands a little bit. And if that makes you jumpy, that's right. then that's your problem. But that's also your, that's you, you not knowing your community and the people that you're talking to. So you should have to go there and learn that Ray Ray might talk a little different than you and he might use his hands, but he's harmless. Okay. Mm -hmm. You might not know that John over there has a grill in his backyard and that smoke isn't scary. That's just him cooking up some food. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of you coming around bothering people, you know the community, but we don't do that. We just throw them out there. We've got to teach people. It, it all comes with learning and understanding and education. Education. So we're winding down in time. Um, I just want to say, though, education will open things up for everybody, because I think that's part of the biggest challenge here is that people hear things. They everybody's learn things from social media. They learn things from school. They learn things from society, things that aren't even based in truth our implicit biases and if people would just open themselves up and educate and learn everything that you're saying would actually make sense to most people. Um, so I have a few questions for you. First of all, amen to everything you said. I'm like, my heart's like beating so fast. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Ray Lynn says that as a hairstylist that she trained longer than police officers and post certification. And yeah, I mean, it, the, you already said it all, but ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the thing. They just need to fill a position. Oh, right. all right, we got a cop out there. We're good. Next, Raylan, how you, Raylan? Are you good with the razor? You got, uh, <laughs> got skills with the razor? Maybe. Let's see. So, since you guys have been out there nine weeks now, I think, in your experience, and not only there on your little corner of big change, but what you're seeing in the world, do you think that change is happening right now? Absolutely. For me, it is. I get a lot of people that drive by in a car, they're yelling, they pull over, we get to talk to them. Some people listen, they're like-minded and they get it. They're able to understand what we're saying and how we're feeling. We're not saying that all lives don't matter. That's not what we're saying, but we need all the help. So we get people that walk over, that wanna yell, that wanna really understand a lot of it. They just don't know, they're not aware. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are changing. We got sweet little Mason. Mason used to drive around. Well, his parents used to drive him around. He used to blow the whistle and do a thumbs down every single day. I started telling him, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then all of a sudden he's doing good job. He's doing a thumbs up now. <laughs> and now just four days ago, He's screaming on a megaphone, a baby megaphone, Black Lives Matter. Mm. We're educating, we're inspiring, teaching people. So yes, you can change. I get people driving around in the same cars. They go by two, three times a day. They look, you know, they feel uncomfortable, but they keep looking. And then I start waving at them. Hey, how you doing? I love you. <laughs> they are changing. You know, some of them are, and it's unfortunate. It is what it is. But yes. Us being out there, people are changing. Yeah, I think we're seeing, uh, I mean, we're seeing a lot of change. I mean, there's a lot of progress. There's still big changes that need to come, but you got to celebrate the victories. I mean, yeah. NASCAR got rid of the Confederate flag, right? I yeah. mean, I used to think you couldn't go to a NASCAR event without a Confederate flag. Like, they wouldn't <laughs> let you in unless you had one. Um, uh, the Washington football team changed their name from the Redskins to they're going to change it to something else. I mean, they literally had a racial slur as their name and now they've changed that. Um, you're, you're seeing laws enacted, you know, they banned the chokehold, which has been banned for a while, but they're changing policing. Uh, 
we've got Brianna's Brianna's law passed. Uh, no, no knock warrants. You know what I mean? Like they still need to deal with those cops, but you got to celebrate the dubs and keep fighting for more dubs. We got a black bachelor. I mean, I'm, saying, I'm, about to, I'm gonna watch that. Finally, I'm gonna watch that. You know what I mean? Like I never. You, yeah. what, how how long has this show been on? And we finally have a black dude who's gonna I be know. on there. Yo, there are changes happening. So we're there. There is change happening, and there's progress. But we still got a long way to go, and we just gotta keep keep fighting. That's right. And you know what, guys? It's been like what nine, ten weeks. So look at how much has though changed in that short period of time. Yeah. That I believe people like you who keep showing up every day and showing others how to show up and do something every day with this consistency. Imagine what can happen just in another yeah. nine weeks. You know. Um, I want to go ahead and take questions from the audience. If there's anybody uh, that has any, oh, and while I'm ones. waiting on any questions, I'd love to ask you guys, what has been the biggest surprise for you in doing this work and starting the Valley of Change? Has there been anything that has surprised you that you were not expecting? Whether I'm going to be honest, protesting, you got to be built for it. You're out there. You're putting yourself out there. Anything can happen. The first two weeks I was out there, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just protesting. I want to make change. And then you start getting all these people that they come for you. They come for you. You see it happening. You know it's real. They call you names. I get called names on the daily. You just have to expect it. Have a tough skin, but be ready for any and everything. And you asked me yesterday. Are you scared being out here? Not anymore. Not anymore because I'm out here for a reason, for a purpose, you know? But I did, I, I, you know, we've had counter protesters that threatened me and my husband, but I'm out there for a reason and I'm not scared. You have to want to change. And you know, two days ago, I had someone on a motorcycle, a black guy, he just stops and it was quiet. He puts his hand up. He says, John Lewis will be proud of you. Keep fighting. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, it keeps you going. It keeps you going. You just have to, I'm not, I'm not surprised at anything. I've had people do the KKK sign. That doesn't even phase me anymore. I, you know, it's shocking to see it, but you have to expect it. Yeah. You have to expect for people to call you racial slurs. You have to expect it now. We're protesting. You know, we're lucky we're not downtown where everything <laughs> goes down. Yeah. You know, we're we're just in Sherman Oaks on the corner. Yeah. But everything happens over here, too. You just got to be ready for it. Um, I'm ready. It is what it is, you know. But I'm not surprised about anything anymore. Quickly, anything from you, Reggie? Is there anything that surprised you about this activism or just or, or what is just showing up lately for yourself personally or in in all of this? Um. It's it's just building. It's giving me more empathy. I mean, I've I've grown more empathetic as I've been out there listening to people, and that's why I talk to everybody because I want to like hear their stories. And when I hear their stories and hear different people's stories, it just makes them more real, which I think more people need to do. Get more, get in touch with people, talk to people every day. Just go meet somebody that you don't know, have a question, say hello, find out something about them. Just builds empathy. So that's what's been doing for me. Amazing. Samantha has a question. She wants to know what are your biggest sources of strength during this everyday fight? LaCora. Or I've had to change my playlist. I've had to really like engage with everybody because I'm gonna tell you at first when they were coming at me, I was going back at them. But I had to like, like Reggie said, have empathy. I started telling them, I love you. Yeah, I know they don't want to hear from me, but I started saying I love you. I start giving them hearts. I start blowing them kisses. I had to change the music on the playlist. I had to put some Tasha Cobbs Leonard on there, mm -hmm. you know, but I have to have the right people around us. You got to really want to do it. You have to really want change. So having the right people around, um, just keeping your head mentally in shape. I've watched that, that transition for you, by the way. Of yeah. being upset at people that were doing yes. and now watching you with the hearts and the wit. Yes, I, love I had to for me, peace yeah. of mind. You know, I can't change everybody, but if I can change one person at a time, 
and give them hearts and show them love. And it's changing because you saw what John said yesterday. There's the guy again. Mm -hmm. The guy would always come around in his car about five, six times a day. Just look, evil look, had no like heart or anything. I just started going up to him. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And now we talk, you know, Relationship. now we talk. So it, it changes. Yeah. What about you quickly, Reggie? What uh, what are your biggest sources of strength during this everyday fight? Uh, just seeing the people show up mm -hmm. like to me when I get up there, like it's it's I I drive up. And when I see the, the corner, when I get to see the corner and I see people out there, that gives me like that just powers me up. Like I see somebody up there stand up there. So I'm, I want to come stand with you and be out there with you and hold my signs and get my arms a good workout. You know, saying burn, burn my shoulder, <laughs> yeah. have them up. Like I love showing up and seeing people out there and. That's just my source of strength is just seeing people fighting for something. I join them. I get that feeling when I'm walking because I walk over there and you turn the corner and you just see whether it's three people or whether it's 20 yeah. people out there. It's that same like, yeah, so I totally get that. Same feeling. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So tell us before I get to my final question of the day, tell everybody whether they're in Los Angeles or not. I have two things. Tell us how they can connect and support the Valley of Change. What are your needs right now? Um. Well, Connect and support the the, uh, the website www.thevalleyofchange.org. Um, get there, get on, get with our you know check in, sit, get on our join our mailing list and our newsletter, um, and then donate. Like we're a hundred percent donation based organization. You know what I mean, we live off of those, and that helps us to feed the protesters. It helps us to help out other protest groups. You know what I mean? Like we take these donations and then we we help other people in our community. Um, last week we made a donation to uh, uh, a trans wellness group. You know, we we want to help with them. We've given money to um, black farmers. You know, people growing grow, growing clean food in the inner city. Um, we've given money to the indigenous community. Uh, this week. I mean, I, today I just bought some books, some black authored books to give to some of our followers. Um, so all this money goes to help educate and help build community and relations. And we can't do it without you. So awesome. donate awesome. anything you can, anything that's on your heart. We'll, we take it and we it 100% it helps and we give back. And what's amazing about their website, guys, is that whether you're here or not, they have all of these actions that you can take from signing petitions to, again, donating to supporting black businesses. You guys got to go to their website. Check it out. Please donate. I could tell you as someone who goes to their protests, they take care of their protesters, number one. And as Reggie just explained, they're taking partnering with other companies and helping out and donating over there. So make sure. I just want to read this comment because I think it's so important. Um, Joy says, thank you for a greater understanding of your work we get so much negative media it's so hard to know what to believe well done guys and that wraps that up for me the reason of why to do this and why to spotlight the valley of change so people can see the real heart in it and you guys being everyday heroes um i want to ask you my final question uh and this question is if you were given a microphone which I know is easy for you, Reggie. And, <laughs> and the entire world can listen to you right now. Um, in 30 seconds, what would be your message for everyone? Go, Reggie. <laughs> Do something every day. That's it. it. Perfect. Show up and show out. Show up and show out. Be the change. Amazing. You guys are so special. I'm honored and grateful to have spent this time with you. Um, I will see you on the little corner of Big Change. <laughs> <laughs> For everybody that has tuned in today, thank you guys. Please go support the Valley of Change. Follow them on Instagram. Uh, what is your handle on Instagram for everybody? At the, it's just the Valley of Change, all one word. The okay. Valley and then they'll, of Change. Yeah. And then they'll see our Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal on there. We love you too, Samantha. Thank you so much, Joy. That's what we want to talk about with the Valley of Change. We want positivity out there. We want people to think of the, uh, the Valley of Change and it's all positive. 
Thank you. Love you, Raylan. Love. <laughs> I can tell you guys that if you do do something every day, which stays in my head ever since I've been going to these protests. And so every single day, whether it's making a video or speaking out or signing a petition or joining you guys on the corner, it is this consistent action, which is going to create a world, a country of equality, equity, and justice. And I have you guys, thanks for leading the way on that. Um, I only hope that we can show up and support you in the ways that you guys need it, that that all, actually that our country as a whole, all of humanity needs it. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Kyla, Kyla, mm -hmm. Brick, Melissa, Marquise, Courtney, <laughs> Melissa, uh, Jonathan. Thank you. All. Will, my husband, Will. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry. Will, I love you. My wife, Ada. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Let's keep fighting. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, John. Thank you all. So don't forget to connect with me at SherryElise.com. Uh, grab my book if you need a coaching session. Join our White Fragility group where we are unlearning racism and learning how to become an anti-racist because it's not enough to just not be racist. We need to be anti-racist. Thanks all for tuning in today. Love y'all. Have a great one. Black Lives Matter. Five Black Lives Matter.